everyone. Today's painting is a sunflower with gold leaf. Here's my reference photo. I took it when I visited Montreal's botanical garden last year and I cropped it and enhanced the colors and then I eliminated most of the leaves around it. My plan was to fill in the blank space with gold leaf. But that'll be the last step here. First I'm going to paint the sunflower starting with the petals. I have been using the same two yellows since 1989. Cadmium Yellow Light, which is a cool yellow, and Cadmium Yellow Medium, which is warm. First, I am painting each petal with the Cad Yellow Light, and then I'm adding Cad Yellow Medium to the darker parts. And I'm just going to go around the sunflower in a counterclockwise direction. I'm right-handed, as you can see, so this means my hand won't touch wet paint as I work. I've mixed a little cadmium red light in with my yellow and I'm going around the circle again to create a deeper yellow. So this gives them a little more dimension but I've still got more to do. I'm not really a fan of painting sunflowers or anything with a daisy-like shape but this one is near the end of the summer and its petals are starting to wilt so they're not all the same shapes. I think tattered petals are more interesting to paint than perfect new ones. Dizzy yet? I'm adding a little more warm orange to the petals this time. So that will take care of the warm parts of the petals, but in my reference photo, the shadowy parts of the petals look slightly green. I'm adding a little cerulean blue to my yellow and I'll put that where I see those cool areas. And the petals are done for now. Time to work on the center. First up, the yellows. Next, yellow ochre. The center has a yellow, green, orange, and purplish brown thing going on. The right side has a crescent moon of warm brown shadows. And I'll let that dry while I work on the leaves. I like to put a base color of yellow down first, and this will be kind of confusing next to the petals, but I'll remember where it is. I've added a little yellow green to the stem and some blues beneath the petals. Next, I'm glazing some yellow green over the top of the yellow, and here and there I'll let some of that yellow show through as veins. While that dries, I'll use masking fluid to start creating texture on the center. I've got a series of little dashes and tiny dots to do, and I'm using an awl tool. The blue tip is its cap, and I kind of like that better than the sharp metal point, which is almost too sharp and the fluid doesn't flow as well. Back to the leaves. I'm using some darker green and blue now, and again, I'm letting some of the lighter colors show through. I think the yellow base creates a warmer and more interesting leaf that looks right alongside the yellow sunflower, but I do this with pretty much every leaf I paint, unless they're super dark. Then I'll paint some green areas that you can see through the petals. While I was doing that, the masking fluid in the center had a chance to dry, and now I'm going to go over the parts of the center with darker colors. I really love painting textures, and the masking fluid will protect some of the lighter colors as I paint over them. I've got more orange to do, and the center is very fuzzy, so I'm using my old round brush, whose bristles are also fuzzy, just dusting on dark green and purple where I see it, and letting some of the light green show through. I'll use the same brush to create texture elsewhere with different shades of brown. And here is my kitten Pooj with the sunflower on the first day. Follow her on Instagram. So this is the next morning, and after sleeping on it, I decided the painting needed some more leaves around it. Pooj is with me, and since I'll be filling in the white spaces with gold leaf, I thought smaller ones might be easier to do than bigger ones. I used my reference photo to find other leaves. While I was talking, I removed the masking fluid, and I'm going to go nuts with texture now. 
Those little dots have shadows, and the space around the green part is pretty complicated. Also, I have an audience. I'll refine those little yellow parts that look like rice, so their edges are a little softer here and there. And I'll add more darkness to the very center. I lighten the orange in a few places with a damp paper towel, and I'm going to call the center finish. Next, I'll take my time and really consider each petal on the sunflower. The basic colors are good, but each petal has deeper shadows and some have tiny tears and specks. I want the petals to look like they're integrated with the center too. I always say my favorite part of any painting is this phase where I've got my colors figured out and most of the shadows and highlights are in place and it's just time to add the details. It is time consuming. This sunflower took three and a half hours for me to paint and that's not counting the gold leaf. This is why even though this video has been sped up 25 times, it's still quite a bit longer than most of my videos. While I was painting, my husband Jeff was being interviewed for a promotion via a video conference. We work next to each other in the second story of our house, which is divided by a bookshelf. Jeff works remotely for a health insurance company, and so I was painting and listening in as Jeff answered questions. As I'm talking to you, we don't know if he got the promotion or not, but I thought he did a great job with the interview. I'm almost done with the petal details. I'm really glad I saved those sunflower photos from last year. I have a huge collection of reference photos I haven't used yet but can't bring myself to delete. Uh, you never know when they'll come in handy though. Next, working as quickly as I can, I'm going to add darker greens to my new leaves. I've got to say the painting looks better than I thought it would. I want the leaves to be as refined as the flower itself, and I will spend some time making them look more realistic. I like the way that dark green makes the petals really pop, and I'm going to work to soften and in some cases mostly eliminate the light green lines you see. Not all of them, but some. and I'm just about finished. At this point, I let the painting dry and scanned it. In case the gold leaf was a disaster, I wanted to at least have a copy of what I've got now. So I've tried painting metallic gold backgrounds using acrylic paints and even nail polish. Here are some samples. The top two are nail polish in a color called Go For Gold. One is old and one is new. The third sample is metallic gold by a company called Plaid, and you can find it in craft stores. Then I layered that plaid acrylic paint over gold watercolor, and the next is just the watercolor by itself. The last sample is gold leaf, and really there's no contest. First I painted the white areas with a golden color and let that dry. This is to make any gaps in the gold leaf look less noticeable. Next, I'm going to coat those gold areas with metal leaf adhesive. This is by Speedball. You have to stir it and then you just paint it on. This adhesive is used for all kinds of surfaces, including wood. The label said the adhesive would dry in 30 minutes and after that it would remain tacky for 48 hours. So I felt like I had a lot of time to play with here. Actually, I didn't. I think my watercolor paper, which is a lot more absorbent than wood, sped up that drying process a lot. Gold leaf time. I've got to admit I was nervous because this was my first gold leaf experience. This is Speedball's Simple Leaf. Regular gold leaf comes in the thinnest, most flyaway sheets. This product presents the gold leaf on sheets that are attached to a thin piece of paper, kind of like wax paper. You press the gold leaf, which again is stuck to the paper, onto your adhesive and peel the paper off. So I'm attempting to do that. 
I immediately noticed two things. One, my adhesive was surprisingly dry and not super tacky, and two, to make the leaf cling to it, I had to press down a little harder than I originally assumed. I had waited about 20 minutes for the adhesive to dry before I began, and I peeked under the sheet to see how I was doing. And on this first sheet, I noticed a few little gaps. I'm using my fingers and the rounded end of my pencil to burnish the gold leaf into the watercolor paper. Upon peeling it off, I noticed a few rough edges where excess gold leaf did not come away from the paper. Uh, these were easily torn away and saved for other sections. I thought the gold looked pretty good, but was not 100% happy with it. I figured I could add specks of adhesive to the parts where the gold didn't stick and try again. Next corner. This section wasn't as complicated as the first one and was more successful. In my experience, the smaller sections were indeed easier than the big ones, so I unintentionally started with the toughest one. Feeling a little more confident, I worked on the bottom half. These smaller sections were as successful as the last corner I did, with a few touch-up areas I'd need to deal with later. By the way, I got the idea to combine watercolor and gold leaf from my friend Carrie Waller, who is a wonderful artist and whose website I've linked to below. Hello, Pooj. A couple of years ago, Carrie did a similar project where she painted an autumn leaf that she surrounded with gold leaf, and the result was beautiful. I thought the gold leaf would work nicely with a flower as well. I'm not sure how large Carrie's painting was, but looking back, I probably would have had an easier time painting about half this size. Still, I've got to say I'm thrilled with the result. Here's me patching a small part. And that's what I will continue to do for the rest of the video. It's recommended that you seal the gold leaf after you're done. The sealer and adhesive each cost around $4, and the gold leaf was $8. In case you were wondering, this video is not an ad, it's just something I wanted to try. Unfortunately, the gold leaf freaks out my scanner, and the gold's reflective surface makes it look almost black. It's also hard to photograph, but you can get some idea of the finished product here. Thanks a lot for watching.